Shadow Home Secretary Vet Coopers here breaking into our country if they come on small boats. Well, we want to stop dangerous boat crossings. They are undermining border security and putting lives at risk. What that means is we've got to have action to go after the criminal gangs who are making huge sums as a result of these dangerous boat crossings. And instead, what we've got is, is it's a bit like Groundhog Day. You've got the third Home Secretary in less than two years off to Rwanda with another chequebook. They've already spent £140 million, more spent this year, they won't tell us how much, more promised again next year. They've got more Home Secretaries going to Rwanda than they have asylum seekers for this failing scheme that's still only going to tackle a few hundred people when more than a thousand people have come over the last week because they're still not going after the criminal gangs. Are you happy with the language that he used? Well, look, the, I think you've got to be very clear, we've got to tackle the dangerous boat crossings deal with the criminal gangs and make sure that we've got... I think what people want to see is strong border security and also a fair and effective asylum system that doesn't have huge backlogs, doesn't have huge chaos in it. At the moment, the Conservatives are failing on both counts. They're not tackling border security and they don't have a fair and effective asylum system. And time and again, what they do is they go for the rhetoric, they go for the headlines, they don't actually have practical plans to tackle the problems. To be clear, Shadow Home Secretary, would you use that language? You've heard me answer the questions and use very different language because I Would think we should language? be... Would you say that they are breaking into our country? I do think that we should be stopping those boat crossings. It's not what we want to see. But I think the important thing is not about what language or rhetoric we use. The issue is about what practical policies that we have to tackle it. So we've set out policies which are about going after the criminal gangs, a new cross-border unit that could actually take the, the action that we need, working with other European countries, including stopping the supply chain, stopping the boats making it to northern France in the first place. The government's completely failing to do that cooperation work. And instead, we've got, you know, the Home Secretary arriving in Rwanda again today and just going round the same circles all over again. Okay. They've been doing this for, for 18 months and using huge amounts of taxpayers' money. And that is on top of, of course, all of the, the money that they're spending in costly asylum hotels. We would also end the asylum hotels as well. OK, I'm surprised that a, a Labour Shadow Home Secretary would not condemn that sort of language from people who are, some of them, not all of them, some of them fleeing for their lives. That's right. And there's also, look, the, well, the UK has always got to do its bit to help those who have fled persecution and conflict. That's why we have to have a fair and effective asylum system. But we do also need to make sure that we prevent dangerous boat crossings that undermine border security and put lives at risk. Do you think planes will ever take off for Rwanda? Do you know, I mean, they have been announcing these headlines, announcing these policies for, for 18 months now, we've had three different bits. This will be the third amount of le new legislation that they promise is going to solve it all. The first piece of legislation that they passed, they've ended up having to partially revoke because it wasn't working, was making things worse. The second new law that they did on channel crossings, they haven't implemented because they know it won't work. We've got a third one promised. We've got, you know, more money, more cheques being written to Rwanda. And at the heart is this failing scheme that even if they do manage to get it to work, it is only work? a small number of people. Do you well, think it will work? I think it's failing. And what will it work? I think. Do you think before the next election we will see people taking off from London Heathrow and landing at Kigali? I don't know what they will, what, you know, other contortions that they will come up with. But what is clear is even if they do manage to get some flights to Rwanda, actually, this is still only ever going to affect a very small number of people. The court said maybe about 100 people. And yet you've got 56,000 people who are in asylum hotels at the moment because the Conservatives are completely failing to clear the backlog. We've set out a Labour plan that would clear the backlog, end hotel use and would also save the taxpayer billions of pounds rather than end up continually costing the taxpayer more, which is what this, this Rwanda plan seems to be doing. That's going to be a vote winner, though, if those planes take off. Well, if it's just... a policy that's simply a gimmick and actually doesn't work to tackle the problems, sure I think... tough on migration. 
Well, is it? I think what it's going to show is that they're continually they're chasing headlines rather than actually tackling the problems, which is that you've got the dangerous boat crossings, they're not going after the criminal gangs. The criminal gangs are now making hundreds of millions of pounds from this illegal trade, from what is effectively profiting from putting lives at risk, and they're not doing anything to tackle that. You've seen a drop of about a third in the convictions of smuggler gangs, of, of criminal people smugglers, since the last Labour government. Talk to me about these five measures outlined by the government to reduce uh, migration, legal migration. Um, do you support them? Well, we do think that net migration needs to come down. There's been a record increase in net migration since the last sure election. Yeah, and, and that is a result of Conservative policy failures on the economy as well as on immigration and asylum. So the measures we called for was to get rid of this unfair 20% wage discount for overseas recruitment. It was unfair. It was introduced by the Conservatives less than four years ago. Rishi Sunak was involved in introducing that policy. They have finally agreed to get rid of it. We clearly support that. We have also called for an increase in salary thresholds because uh, that, I think, you have the, the, the migration... Well, the Migration Advisory Committee has said that there is an issue about low-paid migration being exploited. We think they should advise on the details, but none of this will work... That number, though, 38,700. Well, we think they should advise on the details, but we do think it should increase, but... None of this will work without action to tackle the skills shortages and to properly link training requirements to the immigration system. And there's nothing on that. There was nothing on that yesterday. Nothing to tackle the huge recruitment problems in social care. Nothing to tackle the huge recruitment problems for engineers. Engineering apprenticeships have halved over the last few years. So no wonder the number of engineering visas has gone up because they're failing to tackle those skills shortages. So what Labour would do is set up new requirements. So where firms are recruiting from overseas for shortage occupations, then there should be new training requirements in the UK as well. Do you agree with uh, Robert Jenrick representing the government this morning that Brits need to get off their bottoms and do some more work? Well, I think there are people working really hard right across the country right now who are facing a cost-of-living crisis, who uh, are really struggling to make ends meet, and I think the Conservative government hasn't a clue about the fresh pressures families are facing and how hard that people are working. But Brits need to do more. Of course, British people should be working, and that's why people are working right across the country. Now, there is a problem about the big increase in people who are long-term sick, yep. and a lot of that is because you've got these huge long waiting lists in the National Health Service because people are waiting for treatment that they urgently need and can't work as a result. Well, I would like to see the government doing something about tackling those huge long waiting lists in the NHS and also working to help people get back into work. Uh, people, for example, we saw a big increase in, in over 50s not working after COVID, helping people get back into work. And that's the right thing to do. But, you know, unless you tackle those NHS sh shortages, you're not going to tackle the problem. And don't use this to have rhetoric about undermining hard-working people across the country who are really struggling right now. Like your leader, do you admire Margaret Thatcher? I'm the granddaughter of a miner and I represent a coal field uh, community. So I think I, look, Margaret Thatcher did huge damage to coal field communities, so I don't support her policies. Uh, how would you describe her? I think she did huge damage to our coalfields. She, I think, just didn't understand our industrial communities across the country. And we're still seeing some of the scars in our coalfields today. OK, and we, well, what have you said to Keir Starmer? Have you pulled him to one side and said, mate, come on? No, look, the point he's making is about the importance of having a vision for the country, and that is what he's set out. He set out five missions for the country no, that... Well, and actually, that's not what he said. What he said was the importance of having prime ministers who set out, who have the vision and the things that they want to change in the country, and that is the kind of prime minister that I think Keir Starmer would be if he was elected, if Labour is elected at the next election, with a clear sense of things that he wants to change in the country to get the economy growing again, to get more police back on our streets okay. and half serious violence. Sure. Those are the practical things people want to see to change lives. I'm right in saying Lee Anderson was a minor, though, aren't I? And that might be right, <laughs> no, I think. No, yeah, no, we have quite a lot of dis yeah, disagreements yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not pushing you on that one. It's good to see you as always. Thanks nice very much. Nice to see you. Anyway.